Hi guys, so today we're going to be trying out some more TikTok nail hacks and designs. There's been so many cool and kind of like on-trend designs that I've seen that I really want to try, as well as some really cool hacks that I also am dying to do and see if they work. I figured we would start with a hack, and this video is from Nails by Rachel Montoya. I believe I've tried another one of their designs before, so shout out to them for always coming up with these cool new things. As you guys know, although I can rarely execute it, I love a good reveal. I also love designs in acrylic. I really admire when people can do them because they are really hard to do in my opinion anyway. But stamping the acrylic with stuff like this is such a cool idea to make designs in acrylic acrylic a little bit easier, so I am dying to give it a try. I do have a full set of nails on that I put on with my peel off base coat a little while ago. At this point, a couple of them are lifted and I'm going to do five designs, but they may not all necessarily be on the same hand. I'm gonna kind of just do nails on the fingers that have nails that are kind of lifting or not on there that good. So we'll start off with the thumb, which was just ready to go. So I'm just going to wipe that off. And I'm going to skip my Jello Jello routine because I feel like I've talked about it in every video now. But just know if you see something on my nail, just up here, it's usually a base coat. I think I'm gonna go with a square tip. I have really been liking square nails lately. I think my favorite will always be stiletto, but right now I'm just liking the square. I feel like you just get more surface area for designs with square. These ones are pretty curved, so I'm gonna have to hold it down for a bit. Perfect. We're all prepped and ready to go. So today for my acrylic, I'm going to try out these new Macar acrylic powders. These are their all-in-one and these are glow in the dark. So this is luminous white, luminous purple, and luminous magenta. I do wanna keep it Valentine's Day themed, so I did pick this color combo, but I think there are six more colors in this range. So I was just gonna swatch these off camera, but I'm a little confused. Cause I, here, let me just show you. It's so bright, right? And I shook these up before I even opened them. And then I also, as you can tell, I've also tried to mix them up. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. Super bright. But then I go to put it down and it's like almost like the color lightens a bit. I don't know, it's a little strange. Do you see what I'm talking about? It like almost washes out once you place it down. The same thing happened to the purple. You can see it, I think, better on the purple. So weird. I guess we'll just try it. Maybe put on the nail properly, it'll be better. But I put this in my light and I think that that part that's like lightened up is the luminous part. I am not sure. We'll just have to see on this. So in that video, they used a tool that I believe was from Young Nails, like a little metal stamp that apparently has been discontinued. And I looked all over for something similar and I could not find anything. I thought about maybe using like a straw, but that would be a little bit bigger. So I was scrolling through the comments on that video and someone said that polymer clay cutters are similar in size. So I got a little kit and look at all of these little shapes that we have the potential to do. There's a heart of course, and the mushroom, the moon, the stars. I absolutely love so many different potential opportunities. So if that was you that suggested that in their comments, Shout out to you. I, of course, am going to use the heart because I do want it to be similar, but maybe I'll use the sparkle or something also. I love the possibilities. So it looks like we have a little bit of prep. All right, cut with scissors, clip the edges, thread it if we want, use cornstarch for smoother cutting, but I think that means in terms for nails for us, I'm going to dip it in the acrylic before I cut the late acrylic. These do honestly look perfect and they are also pretty long. Let's get this heart out. Ooh, it's harder to cut than I thought. Perfect. I'm just going to thread this one just for now. And we are ready to go. Look at that. So excited. Since this is acrylic, we kind of do have to be a bit quick with it. The acrylic will not stay malleable forever. So I can always do just like a general base layer, cut it, do the design with the acrylic stampers. 
I'm just gonna call them acrylic stampers because that's what we're using it for. And then lay clear, or if I'm doing really good, I can lay it all and then stamp it and then file it, we'll see. Okay, I feel like I have a fairly even layer. I'm just going to quickly try to put a little bit towards the cuticle. I did lay it a little bit messy, but we don't have time to waste. So I'm gonna grab my acrylic and I'm just going to dip it in and then we are going to stamp it. Let's see, are you ready? Oh, was my acrylic not thick enough? Well, no, okay, I think I need a thicker layer of acrylic, which kind of panic because I need to do that. Let's try to not let this dry then. Hopefully that should cover up all of the pink. This should hopefully be a thick enough layer now. All right, let's try this again. That's a thicker layer. And I also think that perhaps I also did it a little bit wrong because I think I wasn't supposed to dip the stamp in the color that we're going to put in it. We need to do it with the white. That way it makes it nice clean cut. And I think that the acrylic perhaps needed to be a tiny bit more firm. I definitely panicked initially. So I'm gonna dip it in the white now and let's give it another try. Hopefully this is better. Oh, much better. Not as clean on that one. I know that when some people do little slices out of nails for edges and stuff like that, they dip the knife or whatever in the monomer to help it get an even and nice cut. But because this is plastic, it might melt the plastic if I do that. So that's why I'm not. Lining it up afterwards is so hard. Let's see if I can be quick and put this star one on here. It's kind of a big star. Oh, nope, it's too hard now. It's kind of hard because like it can't just like wipe off acrylic. So I'm going to take just a tiny brush and fill in little itty bitty mistakes that I made that I wouldn't want filled in with the other colors. And I'm gonna fill them in with the white and maybe fix up this heart a tiny bit. Can probably fill it in a tiny bit and then just make the outline a bit better. Let's see if I can kind of like re-stamp it. It's better than what we had. I figure why not just try a couple little things too while we're at it. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of acrylic and I'm just going to try to lay that down as even as I can. So I just wanted to lay this out and see if we can stamp it this way also, because with this way you get outlines and then this way you get a whole piece. And I feel like being able to like make all these little pieces would also be fun and a good use of these little stamps. So I think that it is stiff enough, I think, I hope. So I believe that it is set up enough, so let's try. So we'll give a nice, Okay, I'm gonna give it another minute. These do end up getting a little gunked up with acrylic, so I've just been like getting all of it off with a stiff brush. Okay, it's been about another minute. Let's try again. Uh-oh, got a whole piece. All right, let's see if we can get it out. Uh-oh, mm, it's kind of stuck. So that time I did not dip it in any acrylic and I think that was a mistake and it got stuck. So dipping in the acrylic definitely helps. I think these might be becoming a little bit too dry now, but let's see. Again, took it off, that's fine. Maybe this is better because at the end of the day, the acrylic will dry super hard. And I feel like that one's gonna look better than these ones that keep getting stuck. Those are looking good. Let's do this with the pink now. So these beads of the acrylic are looking a lot better. And with these, these are a lot wetter beads than I was doing for the swatches. And I'm also manipulating them a bit more. You can still see a little bit where that like little bit of marbling was coming through, but it seems like if you work with it a little bit more and do some thinner, more wet beads, that like weird faded look doesn't happen. So we'll let this dry now and let's see if we can poke out these ones in the meantime. All right, they aren't the cleanest cuts in the world, but I do think that they could be cleaned up pretty easily. Really, it's just like the back part and just the little in between here. Let's try this now. I think it's better if it's a little bit softer and you just press really hard. That way the edges are really clean. And for real, be dipping it in that acrylic in between, otherwise it will stick. See if we can get one more out of this little piece here. Oh no. Okay, listen, I thought I was being smart by <laughs> 
trying to like blow it out of the side and that was in fact not a good idea. Anyway, we got a little bit off track. I'll revisit those afterwards. Maybe we'll put them like here or here, something like that. I'm not sure, but let's fill these in now, which is what we were supposed to be doing in the first place. So I'm just grabbing teeny tiny little beads. I did also want to mention, I know some people in the comments on that video, I was just going through them as you can tell, were saying that they don't know why you would do this design this way because it is a bit more time consuming and a bit more work than just say a stamp of gel polish instead or just hand drawing it or using stickers. And for that, I just kind of want to remind everyone that everyone likes doing things in different ways. Sometimes the process is more fun for people rather than the end result. And personally, I feel like a design done in acrylic does to me anyway look distinctly different than a design done with gel, but that's just my opinion. I love trying things all different ways. So while this may take a little bit more time and work, I don't mind it at all. I feel like the process is fun. Trying new things is fun. Learning new skills. Not everyone wants the easiest, quickest, and most simple way to do things. I know I definitely don't a lot of the time. I like to just, you know, do things my way and what feels most natural to me, even if it's not necessarily the most efficient. And let's check on these ones. So this one just came off and that looks pretty nice. Let's see this one maybe. That one looks nice too. Look at that. I did also clean up one of the purple ones and I feel like that looks nice also. So that's another possibility. I mean that you could put them on top as like a charm or like a 3D effect or you could encapsulate them. Lots of opportunities. For this, I'm going to let it dry and then we will file it down and then we can decide what we want to do in terms of finishing off the nail. The apex is not quite there all the way. So I might just add a little bit on top of that, but we'll see. Let's file it. I'm really nervous. I think that they're gonna look good except for maybe this one right here. I feel like one of the sides was just a little bit too thin, but we won't know until we try. Okay, so here's what we have. It's absolutely not as good as theirs is. I definitely need a little bit of practice. We'll make it work somehow with the design at the end, but I'm just going to clear cap this now and then file, and then we can figure out how to make it better. So here we are after the clear cap looks good. Well, the shape of the nail looks good. The design, not so much. I feel like it, it was more of like me than the method, but we still have the pieces that I cut out that I think can save this look. And I know what I said earlier about stamping it with gel being easier. Not everyone wants to do that. Well, I'm gonna roll it back and I'm going to just try it now and do that to try to save my work. We'll have to see. If this does work, it definitely will not give the same effect that it would have just in the acrylic. I think that the metal tool they had is definitely a little bit better than this little cutter. If I can find one that's metal, I think I would get that because I know that some people definitely put it in monomer and that helps. So I'm gonna try to stamp this now with the same thing. I'm gonna get a light layer of gel. I'm gonna try not to get too much. I don't wanna get it clumpy or anything. There it is. Now I'm gonna try to line it up yeah, definitely not the same. Oh, you know what? I just thought of something. Okay, so I wanna try, I'm gonna stamp this down like that, make a couple. I wonder if I can cure these. They might be too thin, but potentially I might be able to cure them and use the stamp this way. I know that this has completely gone a different direction than we were originally at, so hopefully that's okay. All right, I'm gonna cure these now. Let's see. They could be too thin, but you never know. Okay, let's see, can we get it off easily? Oh my gosh, I think we will be able to. Oh my gosh, we're gonna be able to save this look. That is so exciting. 
They are a little bit fragile, but they do retain their shape after they've been popped off. And they do have to be thick enough to hold together. Like this one's not gonna hold together very well, but this one will. So I'm going to take a top coat and let's set these on. It's not gonna be perfect, but it is so much better. I do really wish it would have looked better the original way, but at the end of the day, I am so happy that I saw that and now have all of these stamps because I feel like there's so much that you can do with them, especially seeing these with the gel, which again, they're not perfect and they look less perfect over the um, acrylic, but I also love that we were able to do some of these cutouts. So I wanna put some of those on here too. Oh, that looks so much better than uh, everything else. That's okay, that's fine. And lastly, let's just put a final top coat on top of everything. And here we are. So next up, I want to try using eyeshadow to do some sort of gradient on my nails. I've seen quite a few videos of people saying how well it works. And I think maybe I've tried doing eyeshadow on nails before, but definitely not like this. And I want to also do a sort of like trending-ish design using the eyeshadow. So I'm going to do some Korean blush nails. And those are basically nails that have like that nudish translucent base, but then has a gradient of pink or red in the center, you know, like you would put blush on your cheeks except that I'm going to do a little bit of a spin on it that I've also seen. And instead of a pink gradient in the center, it is a blue. And I thought that this would be the perfect thing to try with the eyeshadow, so let's get to it. And our next victim will be this one. I have gone ahead and put on a full cover tip and I'm going to start with a like transparent nudish gel. Ooh, looks so good. Then I felt like it would be really fitting to use this gel. I know I've been using these a ton lately. I just love them. I didn't think I'd end up using these like transparenty shimmer gels so much, but I just, I don't know. I feel like they call to me every time I do my nails. So I'm gonna do a layer of this too. I feel like it'll just add to the effect, although this will still be a little like transparent, but it'll just give it a little bit of extra pizzazz. For the eyeshadow, I have this colorful ColourPop palette with a couple of blue shades. And then I am gonna use just like an old eyeshadow brush because I don't really think I have like any fluffy nail brushes, I guess. I saw people do it with the sticky layer, without the sticky layer, and then with a matte top coat. I think I want to try just wiping off the sticky layer and then we can try on top. And if it doesn't work that well, then we can add a matte top coat. Actually, I think I'm gonna start with the lighter part. That way I don't over darken it. I believe that in the past I have used eyeshadow on my nails somehow, but it was a really, 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 really long time ago. So let's give it another go. Okay, I feel like showing up a tiny bit. Maybe let's try this darker color. Definitely looks way lighter than it does in the pan. All on. Mm. Okay, maybe we won't be able to do that lighter bit on the inside. I feel like it kind of starts going, but if I brush it, off at all it like all kind of like disappears so i think let's try putting on a matte top coat it could also just be that these eyeshadows don't want to stick to a surface like nails and if that's the case then i will go grab a different palette there we go let's try again that looks like it's sticking so much better Ooh, pretty I would love to be able to have like really smooth gradients this way that's something i've always struggled with I don't think I have a, like a very light touch. I'm just doing something like delicately. It's not really my strong suit. I feel like it looks a little bit better on camera than it does in person, but still very impressed with how it's just like working in general. Like it's definitely going on there and it looks good. I'm gonna take that lighter color from earlier a little bit and do that around the edges now. I think it'll stick a tiny bit better. Let's try to maybe blend it out a little bit. And the gradient does look super smooth. I think I'm going to try a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of this shimmer right here. Well, hopefully not any of the green on it, but just a little bit of this shimmery blue to put in the center of that. Just like right in the center. Mm, couldn't really see that. Maybe I will try the brighter shimmer blue. The other one seemed a little bit more like just tiny glitters. 
that's what I'm looking for. So pretty. I feel like that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to top coat it. So I'm going to use my non-wipe top coat and this is what I used for powders. So there is a potential that there could be a couple little small flecks in here, but I don't wanna use any of my other top coats because I'm not sure if any of this will pick up on the brush. I'm gonna try not to drag it too many times. And there we are, let me cure this. I absolutely love how that looks. I am so impressed with it. It looks like an aura, which I know that's also like what these are called, but it is so pretty. And it really does look so smooth. I'm like right here looking at it. It looks so good. As far as designs on this, I think I just wanna put like a single rhinestone. I've seen that done a lot with this type of design as well. And I think it's going to match absolutely perfectly. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of glue right here, just where I'm gonna be putting it. And then I'm gonna do one more top coat around that to make sure it's like really secured on there and everything is nice and smooth. This next design is one I've definitely seen quite a few places for quite a while before, but I came across this one specifically and I really wanna try it. This video specifically is by Sammy Reggie where they are curing bubbles on a gel polish to give it like a textured bubble effect and then doing a cat's eye on top. And you guys know I've been loving cat's eye and bubbles is just another one that I've never tried but I've seen so many people do and I feel like it always looks so cool. So let's give it a try. So none of the other nails are wanting to volunteer to come off. So I'm just gonna have to take a couple off really quick. So I'm just going to do that and just prep the rest of them with their base for the rest of the hacks and designs. We're gonna try. So for this, I'm not sure if there's like any particular bubbles you're supposed to use. So I just kind of got like a pump of my hand soap. And then I also got a straw in case I need to like bubble it up more. I don't know. Now I know that we can do pretty much any color we want, but I am going to do a black like they did because I feel like the cat's eye will show up best. I know that a lot of people have done this without the cat's eye, but I just figured, you know, I've been loving the cat's eye lately. So let's do the cat's eye. Okay, looks nice. Now we're not supposed to cure it. Okay, so here are my bubbles. I don't know, should I like try to fluff them up a little bit? <gasps> How do you fluff up bubbles? I think that's fine. I think they used a fan brush though. So I feel like that's probably fine. Let's just, bubbles? Oh my goodness. This feels so incredibly unnatural. <laughs> it's like putting, it's not water, but it almost feels like it on your uncured nails. It just does not feel right. You know what I mean? I feel like what I'm doing is like illegal, <laughs> but all right, let's cure that. I imagine for quite a while. Okay, are you guys ready? For some reason, I am so nervous. Ah, okay. Oh, oh my gosh, you guys hear that? Oh my gosh, look at how incredibly cool. That almost looks like lace, doesn't it? Like, I feel like I could like put a top, I'm mean, obviously I'm gonna fill in the holes, but I feel like I could put a top coat on it and call it good now and it would be really cool. Oh my gosh. And the texture is crazy. Like, just look at that. Listen, I got some new lenses recently, so I'm gonna give you guys the close up that no one asked for. <laughs> Okay, hold on. I wonder how the other nails look. Okay, anyway, sorry for that slight detour. 
after, I don't remember what video it was, I asked you guys for cat's eye recommendations and you guys gave me a ton. Thank you. I got this one. It's like a holographic pink cat's eye that I think will be super pretty in this. I do notice that my bubbles are not nearly as big as theirs, so hopefully that's fine. But we're trying to make sure we get in all of the nooks and crannies. Trying really hard to make sure I get it in everything. I feel like that's pretty good. So I have a theory actually that I suck at cat's eye because I'm only seeing it under my lights in here and it's really hard to see little things like that, especially like shifty things with a ton of lights. These lights don't really show like shifts very well. I guess I'll try with the lights and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna turn off my lights. Let's try to move things. We're supposed to move them in the center. Is that moving them in the center? I think it is. Okay, I think so. Okay, I think I did it. Oh my gosh, I'm for real going to make sure I label this side because my problem is I always end up not knowing which side of the magnet does what. I feel like it'll look a lot better not in these lights, but I think I did it. So I'm gonna wipe off the nail now and it's pretty smooth, but it does say to file until smooth. So I'm going to do that. And maybe this will reveal more of the bubble design underneath. I feel like their bubbles were a lot bigger than my bubbles. I did end up doing like a second coat because I felt like it wasn't giving enough of the magnetic stuff. So here we are. Let's put on a top coat now. It's looking so cool. I definitely think that theirs looks better because you could see a lot more of the texture, but it, my bubbles just were way smaller than theirs. Like, what do you use? Like bubble bath bubbles? So I just used hand soap bubbles. <laughs> Next up, I came across this design on my For You page and I just thought it was really cool. It is from Amoria Nails. And I've seen people do bigger blobs of gel as designs on nails lately. A lot of the time with like a powder or something on top or in different colors, but I thought that this was a really cool twist on it by using the airbrush and then coating that design and then wiping it off. It's just really creative and it seems really easy to do, but I do have to use my airbrush. So we'll have to see about that. So let's give it a try. Now, if you watched my last video, you'll know that I had some issues with my airbrush. So I actually bought a new top for it and we're gonna be able to airbrush today, which I am super, super excited for. But before we do that, I should probably put on a base color. Once again, I'm gonna kind of just follow what they were doing and use white. I just rewatched their video to make sure that I am doing it correctly. And they said to top coat this. So let me do that really quick. So I'm not going to make you guys watch my uh, learning curve with the airbrush. So if you see um, airbrush all over my hands and stuff already, just ignore that. I love how that looks before it mixes. It's so cool. As much as I would really love to do <laughs> all kinds of colors like they did, I don't think that's gonna happen for me. I think we're just gonna have to go with a regular old ombre with the airbrush. I need more practice with my airbrush before I put y'all through that. So let's just do this and shoot for a very nice ombre. <laughs> that's it. Okay, very nice. And then I'm going to do a light pink for the ombre. I feel like you know, keep it very Valentine's Day. Honestly, that turned out pretty good. I definitely want to do some more practice with my airbrush soon. I feel like there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. And like, look at how good that turned out. I feel like especially with like a top coat over, it looks super smooth. But now they say to go in with some hard gel. So I'm going to just squeeze some out. And they used a dotting tool. So I'm going to do that. And I'll try to do this to my best ability. Okay, I'm so nervous because it's not like you can really fix anything that you mess up with this since it's like the hard gel and the airbrush. Because if you wipe on the airbrush, it's just gonna come straight off. Do a blob or two, the small blob. I definitely wanna do a heart. <sighs> I feel like blobs are simultaneously easy and hard to do because even though it looks random, it like really isn't. I wonder how this texture is gonna like feel though. Just like in general. I've been wanting to do the blob nails, but I've been worried that they would feel like a bit too thick for me. All right, I got some blobs on. I'm gonna cure it now. Ooh, I'm nervous, I'm so nervous. Then you're supposed to wipe it off with acetone. I don't know how well this will do right now. I might have to scrub off the rest in the shower later, but I'll try. All right, ready? Ooh, I'm so nervous. I don't know if it's gonna look good. Okay, whatever, I'll just do it. Oh my gosh, let me go wash my hands. <laughs> This is a mess. Last but not least, we have this design by Morgan. Nailed it. It is a furry, fuzzy, 
design. I feel like what drew me to this design was that I have never worked with any type of like fur or like flocking powder on nails before, but it's definitely not something that's very popular that I see very often. And I don't think I've ever wanted to try it before because obviously the logistics of having like wet nails sounds so weird, but in the comments they said that the nails dry fairly quickly. So with that being said, I will give it a try. <laughs> So this flocking powder was such a pain to get. I have no idea why. I tried looking for the one that the person in the video uses, but I was just not able to find it. And for some reason, flocking powder, especially like flocking powder for nails was really hard to find. I looked on Amazon and there was some that would come in like two or three weeks but almost nothing, at least when I searched it, that would come within a few days. And I don't know, just having a weirdly hard time finding it. I was able to find some on Daily Charm, just these two colors. And thankfully it came about two hours ago. <laughs> So I got this obviously because I needed this. So I got a couple other things from there in my order that I also just picked up because I feel like, I, can I just order this? No, of course not. So I'll just give you guys a little mini haul very quickly. Some caviar beads. I feel like I want to start filling in tiny, tiny, tiny little gaps whenever I do gems. So yeah, I feel like these could come in handy. Tiny letters, layered ombre French accents. This film, super pretty. Look at these little mushroom charms. These teeny tiny metal hearts, this little charm mix, these tiny metal circles, and my favorite, honestly, of the whole little haul is these little mushrooms. Aren't those adorable? I love them. So yeah, just a couple things since I was already grabbing the flocking powder. Also, I want to clarify, I was able to find flocking powder in general, but most of it was for like bigger crafts. And I did not want to buy like a huge thing of it. And some of the like fibers were a lot bigger, which I wanted these like teeny tiny little ones because obviously they're going on a nail. Until I just opened this up and looked at my order, I was sure this was gonna be white. I have no idea why. And there's not a ton pattern wise that I can do with these. So I am also going to do a little heart design. I'm thinking pink background and yellow hearts. I've found some correlating gel colors, so let's get to it. It might be kind of hard. I'm doing it with my opposite hand. We'll see, hopefully it's fine. So we'll start with the gel. The base of this is a little bit of a mess since I dripped acetone all over it while I was doing my airbrush stuff, but it's fine, we'll cover it. I am going to order one of the sets of the flocking powder that said it was gonna take like two or three weeks because I feel like I would like to do more designs with it, but in terms of wanting to try it for this video, two or three weeks was not gonna work. Something I did not even realize because I don't really make it a habit of touching the sticky layer on the nails after it's cured, but these gels do not have a sticky layer. They cure without one. Super cool, very nice. <laughs> I know there are some other gels that do that, but I just have not like randomly come across one, but it's a nice surprise. So now let's do the yellow hearts. I think I'm gonna just start with a dotting tool. I'm gonna try not to make them too small because I don't know how precise we can really get with the flocking powder because something tells me that I'm not going to be nearly as skilled with it as they are in the video. I want to stick my finger in that so badly and see how it feels. Ooh, it's kind of dense. Ooh, fun. Okay, so I'm assuming that we just put it into uncured gel and then cure. So let's do it. I'm gonna just use a top coat and this is a pretty thick top coat. So I think that's good to go. I'm very excited. Okay, I'm gonna just go in with the yellow at first. Oh, look at how it just attaches. Okay. Oh my gosh, fun. It's so bouncy. Okay, it's kind of hard to get precise with this. I'm not sure how exactly I'm supposed to do the edges. Like, might have to take a couple little touch-ups. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this. I love this way more than I thought I would. It'll just be a test to how this feels on my nail. They said that it just dries pretty quickly, like after you wash your hands. So we'll just have to see. I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't dry pretty quick. It really, really shouldn't retain a bunch of moisture. All right. There's the yellow. Let's put down the pink. I absolutely love how bouncy it is. I know that it's not, but I'm having a little bit of like an irrational fear that it's gonna make me itchy like fiberglass. 
I'm also hoping that the texture just doesn't bother me. Some people don't mind like the texture of uncoated glitter on your nails, but I do. I personally cannot deal with that. I have a lot of weird things with like texture and stuff. Like I'll tell you guys right now, the bane of my existence, tags on clothes, especially itchy ones. And then ones that can't be taken out with a seam ripper and will like undo the whole side of whatever it is if you take the tag out. Okay, I feel like that looks pretty good. Let's cure. All right, I can touch it now. Huh. I feel like I'm having fibers come off on my hand, but I feel like that's probably just gonna happen until all of the excess is done coming off. But it doesn't really feel that crazy. It kind of just, I don't know, like maybe feels like velvet a little bit. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see also like how much of this stays on there. It should stay on. I don't know why it wouldn't. The excess is gonna still come off, of course. But yeah, I mean, it really doesn't feel like fur that much. Like it doesn't feel smooth. It's not as crazy feeling as I thought it was gonna be, which is cool. But there we have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to keep trying all these cool different hacks or designs from TikTok, please make sure to give this video a like so I know to keep doing them. Also, if there's a design or a hack you wanna see me botch, feel free to tag me on TikTok or Instagram. I would say I'm pretty good about seeing stuff most of the time, I try. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will hopefully see you next time, bye.